Hello, saints. This is part two of a case for the Old Testament. In the last video, or in the first video, I should say, for this part one, uh, we showed that the New Testament church did not have a New Testament Bible. They had the Hebrew scriptures that we call the Old Testament. We also learned that it is the Old Testament Paul was referring to in 2 Timothy 3.16 when he said, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. It was the Old Testament he was referring to in Romans 15.3 when he said it was written for our learning and for our comfort. And we also learned in Luke 24, uh, the last part of it, the latter part of it, that it was the Old Testament that Jesus, after his resurrection, chose to teach the disciples about himself. So I touched briefly on the Old Testament being full of types, shadows, and patterns. I think it is important to separate biblical uh, types, shadows, and patterns from Old Testament illustrations. Old Testament types, shadows, and patterns are made known in the New Testament. The New Testament identifies them as such. A type in the Old Testament is a story that actually happened or was prophesied about that also gives a word picture or a counterpart of a spiritual reality in the New Testament. A type is always identified as such in the New Testament. For example, the exodus of the children of Israel started with the Passover blood of the Lamb. There was a Passover. They shed blood, put it on the doorpost, and that was what the Old Testament calls the Passover. This blood was applied to the doorposts of the Jewish houses, and the death angel passed over them while slaying the firstborn sons of all the Egyptians in their household. This is a type of Christ. The New Testament specifically says in uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, this is verse right here, Therefore purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you are truly unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. So there is that type. Christ, our Passover, is going all the way back to the story in Exodus. There was stuff about unleavened bread and, and all that. All that's included in the story. And I'm not going to go into real big detail because that's not what this is about. But it's to show you that type, that Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. That is a type in the Old Testament. What do we mean by pattern? So in Exodus 25, 8, 9, it says this, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all of its furnishings. So, just so you shall make it. In other words, make it exactly, make this tabernacle exactly like the pattern I'm going to show you. The book of Hebrews. A pattern here will be the pattern of the tabernacle. We also see in the book of Revelations there is a tabernacle in uh, heaven. So that pattern is possibly based on that. Uh, so what do we mean by shadows? In Colossians 2.17, Paul speaks of shadows. And Paul saying, Let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival, a new moon, or Sabbath, which are shadows of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. These things are found in those books, the books of Moses, are shadows. A lot of it is shadows, specifically with food and drink, festivals, new moon, Sabbaths, are shadows of things to come when we get to heaven. So I'm not going to go real deep into it because Paul does it, but he gives a firm warning to not get caught up. He says right here, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels and intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Whole denominations have been created on these shadows, right? On Sabbaths. There are denominations that just, you know, you're going to hell if you're not having church on Saturday. That's just the way they feel about it. But it's a shadow of things to come. So the, the warning, though, the, uh, the warning I would give is, is stay away from speculation and people who are teaching speculation as facts and truth. Uh, they have this false humility and seem so pious and have these false visions and. S Things that they have not seen, like it says, things they have not seen, they know nothing about. Just stay away from people like that. So I'm putting a challenge to you. If you've not read the first two books of the Bible, Genesis and Exodus, then go to God and ask him to open your eyes, the eyes of your understanding, and show you why he gave us the Old Testament as you read those books. So much of the New Testament will make more sense. There will be fuller revelation 
if you read the scriptures that Jesus, Paul, and Peter read, which are the Old Testament. So why all the fuss? Why is it important for us to have this knowledge? After all, it's just knowledge of something, right? I am firmly convinced that God has chosen for us to not only receive comfort, as we looked at earlier from the Old Testament, but that He will use what we read from the Old Testament to give us more confidence in Him and establish us deeper in the true faith. That's why I think it's important. All right, saints, that's it. Y'all have a good day.